already feel heated over this. Hello Sparrows and welcome back to Green Eyed Starlet. If you are new here, hello and welcome. My name is Brandy and I'm working to live a life worth living through art, movement, and exploration. So if you are a returning subscriber, a returning Sparrow, then you may know that this past week I did not post any videos um, and we'll get to that in a second. If you're new here, if this is the first video you're seeing from me, hello, welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy it. But yeah, this last week from June 1st to June 7th yesterday, Day, I muted myself or I took a pause not to you know take a step back and just kind of be silent and take a week to myself I took this week to educate myself to learn to try to provide resources for other people and try to promote black voices and basically I just wanted to make this video to state that I truly 100% believe that black lives matter and I wanted to share with you guys what I learned from my week of being paused and some other thoughts that I have about everything that's happening right now. I am going to chapter this video. If you don't know what chaptering is, basically I'm going to go down into the description box and put timestamps on each section of this video so you can skip around if you'd like to. But please do watch the whole thing if you are wanting to have a discussion about anything. I think a lot of what I'm saying is going to go all together. So if you have a problem, and that is totally okay, if you have a problem with something that I say, please, I'm totally willing to have a respectful, meaningful conversation in the comment box down below. But please watch the whole video so that you don't have just a half baked idea of something that I'm trying to say as I might elaborate on it later on. Because this channel supports equality and love no matter of your race, gender, your sexual orientation, your religious beliefs, whatever. This channel stands for love and equality. And if that doesn't align with you, I am very sorry, but we just do not vibe together. Okay, with all that being said, let's get into the meat of this video. Because I have a feeling it's going to be pretty long anyways. So first of all, I want to talk about the pause. So I actually did not intend for this pause to happen. On Tuesday, June 2nd, 2020, there was a virtual protest. A hashtag was created for the music industry of the show must be paused, which was an effort to take a pause to halt the work week in the music industry, thus allowing people to educate themselves and kind of taking a moment to put the importance and put a spotlight on all the things that were going on in the world right now and how we can educate ourselves. This was combined with, I think, a different hashtag of some sort. It was basically a big game of telephone, I swear, but basically all of Instagram went dark and everybody was posting just a singular black square. Now, that's kind of what started everything for me in the pause or me being muted because I was seeing that I hadn't posted anything on June 1st, so I kind of just already fell into that. Not saying that, you know, ooh, because I didn't post anything on June 1st, I was being a part of, you know, the cause. It wasn't until June 2nd that I really took a step back and looked at everything that was happening. So, on June 2nd, I saw all of these posts and I saw other content creators out there who were saying that they were going to be muted for the next week. I looked into why they were being muted, why, why they were doing what they were doing, because it's always important to do your research. Basically, it wasn't I'm muting myself, taking a step back from social media for my mental health or whatever it may be. It was an actual step back from social media and self-promotion, but basically I agreed with what everybody was saying. Basically to take a step back to give this whole week for people of color, for black people, for melanin voices to have a bigger spot in the spotlight because I fully understand, especially I feel like TikTok has really made me aware of this, of how privileged I am as a white woman to be promoted and pushed, you know, to more eyes, to more viewers. I think that this might be a conversation that someone can correct me on. I personally have always lived on YouTube and Instagram, and I feel like on those two platforms, I've never seen too much censorship of black creators or just people of color in general creators. But TikTok has really opened my eyes and made me aware of even going back to these other platforms that, you know, just because I am a white woman, I might be getting a special treatment or I am getting a special treatment and being pushed out to more viewers. And and that's just 
just mind-boggling to me and not okay. So I took this last week, this pause, I didn't post a vlog on Wednesday, I didn't post a Saturday video, I actually didn't teach yoga on Saturday, but that was because of a protest and I'll get into that as well. But I thought it was really important to take a step back. If you follow me on Instagram, I am sorry for how much I spammed the crap out of you guys this past week on resources and information and, you know, memes, but like real thinking memes, reflective memes, if you will. I don't know if there's another word for reflective memes. Are memes exclusively funny or can they make you reflect? I don't know. That was kind of what the pause was and that's why I paused. Moving into the next chapter of this video, I wanna talk about the protests. I live in Orlando, Florida and on Tuesday, I did in what my opinion is the most important thing I've done with my life thus far. The reason I say that is because I've done a lot of really cool things with my life. I'm not trying to brag in that right or whatever, but can I tell you going to that protest and being there? And I will tell you, I was scared out of my mind before I went. You know, I've been on TikTok, I've been on Twitter, I've been on Instagram, and I've seen all of these horrible situations and that made me anxious. That made me super anxious. Luckily, I had, you know, Ben standing next to me and two of our really good friends, and then, you know, we saw even more people that we knew at the protest. And yeah, there were a few times that I I, I was scared, you know, I thought something was about to go down. Seeing police officers in broad daylight wearing gas masks and then seeing more put on gas masks, that was terrifying. That was terrifying to the point of me, you know, grabbing my friends, pulling them closer and saying, okay, if something happens, take off because that was terrifying. But this protest was so important and it was so important that I was there. There was another one that happened on Saturday and I didn't go to that one. I was planning on going to that one, but I didn't end up going because I dog sat for someone who was going and was bringing so many supplies. She brought enough supplies to feed a freaking army and I'm so, so freaking proud of her. And to all the people, cause it was like a group effort. A lot of people donated money so that she could go out and buy supplies for this. And just that girl has like my freaking heart. And even though I wanted to go to the protest, I felt that my time and my presence would be better spent allowing her to go. But the protest that I went to on Tuesday was honestly the most important thing I've done with my life thus far. I took a stand for something that I believed in and I kind of put my money where my mouth is in like a real physical sense, like I showed up. And I'm not saying that if you haven't gone to a protest, you're not showing up, you're not being an ally because there are so many reasons that people can't show up in a protest. I mean, we're still in a pandemic and that freaks me out. I'm somewhat of a hypochondriac. Ben would say that I'm a real hypochondriac but you know being in the middle of a pandemic and all of this going on is not easy for a lot of people so knowing that there is ways to show up we, me and Ben were at that protest for three and a half four hours we left our two other friends and up until that point we had no problems whatsoever except for that one instance where they were putting on the gas mask but nothing was ever thrown, nothing was ever done. The whole protest was peaceful. Everybody who was protesting was peaceful up until around the time that curfew happened and my two friends were on their way back to our apartment at the time so that made me so freaking scared and they actually themselves witnessed the police turn around, box protesters in and mace them. I don't know if they threw tear gas, but they for sure turned around and pepper sprayed a bunch of people. And I was just so, so happy that they weren't in that group, but then my heart broke for every single child. Because at the end of the day, every single one of us is someone's child. All the children that did get maced. It might not be right for me to say children, but I think if we take that time to identify that we're all human, we're all here living the same freaking life. If we can remember that, maybe we can bring some empathy and some humanity back into this conversation. You know, we brought waters to hand out and like to me even that, like being there for people is something that I kind of forgot how important it is to me. I love people so much. Being able to go to that protest and stand next to people who believed in the same thing as me. I think I'm getting emotional here and that's that's okay. I'm, I'm kind of past the point of caring if I cry in front of people now. There were so many people there of all walks of life and that just made me so incredibly happy. Seeing humanity show up for humanity, basically that's 
that's all I have to say about the protest specifically, I think. But yeah, I will hold to it that that is the most important thing that I've ever done with my life. Hopefully it's not the last most important thing I ever do with my life. But yeah, I was really proud of myself and my community, you know, for showing up and doing what's right and making our voices be heard. Okay, this video is getting really long and I'm so sorry about that. Okay, so what I learned in my past week. One, I have learned that so much needs to change. Honestly, to this point in my space in this world and to the point where it's not just about Black Lives Matter, there needs to be a whole reform of this entire country. We need to get rid of the systematic racism. We need to get rid of a crap ton of policies that are currently in place and we need to bring in a bunch of policies that need to be put in place and it's just it's mind-boggling and it's exhausting to learn all of this stuff and I said that in one of my Instagram posts because I was sharing left and right all the stuff that I was learning all the stuff that I was reading and consuming and I made a highlight on my Instagram that you can still go and look at right now because I wanted to make that highlight so that those stories weren't lost forever because you know on Instagram you post to a story and it's gone within 24 hours. It was so much information that I didn't want people to get overwhelmed by all of the stuff that I was posting. I wanted them to freely be able to access that information and that knowledge whenever they needed to. I was taking it upon myself to become exhausted, to, you know, research as much as I could, to find as much as I can. And obviously, like, Instagram, I feel like, was kind of an easier place and an easier platform to share a bunch of information. I even put, and I, it's still there, a link in my bio to a lot more resources that you could learn from. But, like, I learned so much during this week. Even to the things like, I learned where a bunch of phrases came from that I had never even considered or thought about where these phrases had come from. And that's something that's really interesting about, you know, the English language and stuff like common phrases. And now I'm, I'm blanking on all of them. I Like the word thug, like I had no idea the real definition of the word thug, I guess. And you know, how it is stemmed in racism. or oh, peanut gallery. I had no clue that peanut gallery came from a racist concept. Things that I had never known before because like who in, in high school learned some of these things? Like, and it's just crazy. Like I soaked up so much information I feel like to the point where I don't know if my brain's completely working still. I know I still have a lot to learn but I was really happy with how much I have learned and how much information was being shared around. I definitely don't think that it is the job of any black person to educate anybody, but the information that is being shared out there by both black people and, you know, just educators and things like that is so, so important. And if you can get your hands on any of those, that information, I definitely think you should. I think one of the biggest things that I learned throughout all of this is just kind of like this argument and I'm getting a little personal here, but you know, one thing about being a true ally is being able to call out, you know, your white friends, your white family members on when they are being racist or when they are saying things that are not okay. And I had to face that. And you know, it was one of those moments where I could have chose to just ignore it completely, but I had to speak out about it. And I'm glad that I did. It may have cost me family members because I was willing to have a real dialogue and I came from such a place of love and compassion that it really hurts me how they came back at me so filled with hatred. I learned that, you know, this isn't gonna be an easy road. I don't think that you should immediately block them or delete them. I think that it's important to have these conversations because they might just not know. I know it's really hard to just be like, hey, ignorance is not a thing anymore. But for some people, it really is. I think, especially for older generations, I'm not saying that all older generations can't learn and adapt. I'm not saying that. But I think that they have been here for so long. They have their beliefs, you know. What is to say your belief is better than what they've known for however many years? I'm sorry, guys. I'm all over the place. Okay, let me bring it back. This is not about politics. There is a lot of the political system that needs to be changed, but Black Lives Matter and this movement is not a political movement. It's a humanitarian movement, if you ask me. It's about humanity. It's about human rights, and that's not political. So it doesn't matter if you are right, left, Republican, Democrat, Independent, uh, 
whatever all of them are. I'm not very well versed on politics, so I'm not having that conversation, but it's not a political conversation. It's more important of how true your heart is, how loving your heart is, and I think that's something that I really learned from this because I think it is easy, especially in America. I don't know the politics of many other countries, but especially in America, I feel like it's super easy for someone to have an argument and then immediately it's deemed a political fight. We need more people who are willing to have a conversation and willing to discuss and hear each other's opinions so that we can all be more educated. Even if we can't come to an agreement of any sorts, even if we can't compromise on anything, at least we know and we understand, I'm getting heated, sorry, the other side of the matter. And I think that's super important. So yeah, I also learned, and I think this is an important thing that I learned and maybe I'm teaching you something here, but you know, the acronym ACAB doesn't actually stand for all cops are bad and I think that's a really important thing to know because I mean some people are using it as that acronym and if they're using it as that acronym that is completely up to them or whatever but the main acronym was actually supposed to represent all cops are bastards and if you know the real or one of the definitions um, English has so many definitions for so many words and I just I can't let me look it up real quick so one of the definitions of bastard is no longer longer in its pure or original form and basically the acronym or the phrase that has been created of all cops are bastards means that all cops are serving a corrupt system. I personally do not believe that all cops are bad, just like I don't believe that all humans are good. As I do have cops in my family, I have looked up to these individuals and believe that they are, you know, respectful people and all of that. Do I, am I saying that they are completely without faults? Of course not. We, no one in this world is without faults, to be fair. Just making that clear, I think that the system at which they serve and protect is corrupt for sure and I think that there is a lot of room for us to learn and change and grow to be a better country, to be a better system, to serve our people better. Not just me, the average white woman, but to serve every single person in this country. You should not ever have to be afraid to call 911. You know, I've seen videos that are so upsetting to me, like I cannot explain how upsetting it is to me, of during these protests a store was looted and broken into and when they called the cops to, you know, help them make a statement and all of that, when the cops arrived they arrested the owners of the shop because they were black and the officers just assumed that because, you know, some black people were loitering around the place at which they were called to action, that they had to be the people that did it. That was so upsetting. So, no, I don't think all cops are bad, but the system needs an overhaul. Moving into a new chapter! I'm sorry that last chapter was so long and I feel like I'm all over the place, so I hope that I can salvage this in the editing room. Yay! But I want to talk about what needs to change now. What can we do to make change? What needs to be changed? Well, in my personal opinion, almost everything needs an overhaul. Almost everything needs reform. Some things I think need to be torn down to the foundation and then rebuilt. I truly believe that. I think that we need changes in who's representing us. Come August here in Florida, we need to be voting. Like that's, if, if I can give you anything in this video. If you are 18 or older, you best be voting. If, if you have a problem with anything that's happening in the world right now, you best be voting. I, I can't make it any simpler for you. Like we can donate and we can protest and we can educate ourselves, but we have to vote. But some other things that I believe need to be changed. I think that we need to defund the police. And this is something that I've educated myself in because before all of this happened, you know, people saying like abolish the police and things like that. I got a little bit nervous because one, I was not educated at all. And I sat back and I thought, okay, well, but like we need the police for, you know, crimes and this, that, and the other. Boy, was I educated. And I thank you to everyone who did educate me on this. Like, I cannot thank you enough. We should be taking some of these millions and millions of dollars, which by the way, how can we afford to you know, supply our police force with millions and millions of dollars, but we can't give our healthcare system anything. But I think we need to defund the police and then make sure that we're taking that money and t sending it 
to the right people. And what I mean by this is, and there are so many people who can talk about this way better than me, but there would be other ways that we could reshape this world if we put more money into other forms of de-escalating problems. And that is from domestic violence to mental health. Mental health is a huge one. I think mental health causes so many problems in this country because we refuse to talk about mental health and oh, I can get so heated about this. America refuses, refuses to talk about mental health and I have no understanding why. I swear I'm not trying to be funny guys, I am so heated right now. God. Okay, things that also need to be changed is we need to be willing to listen to each other. We need to show up for each other and honestly, Take a stand. There is so much that we could do for this country. There is so many things that could change, that need to change. And yet, for some reason, politics are like the thing I didn't learn anything about in high school. We need better education in politics and we need for it to be easily accessible to the common man to understand these laws and these bills that are trying to be put in place. God, this video is so long. I am so sorry, guys. I probably should have made a list of this to make it a little bit more easily understood, but we definitely need reform. We need reform of the system, both the systematic you know, racism that we're all facing. And when I say all, I clearly obviously mean uh, people of color, not myself. Because you know, I'm someone who benefits from it and that is stupid. And I think honestly, that is one thing that I learned throughout this process, um, going back a little bit. But one thing that I learned is that to be an ally and to be here for this movement, I am sacrificing my rights or sacrificing this system that has done nothing but serve me. And I couldn't care less because it's not right. It's just not. And I don't know how people can sit back and see everything that's happening and not want to take a stand. The, my favorite meme, and this is like a reflective meme, I guess, but my favorite meme that I've seen out there right now, it's like, how are you gonna see what's happening? History repeating itself and you're still on the wrong side. You are literally failing an open book test. Literally, history is repeating itself and I don't want it to repeat itself again. And I will take my stand and do everything in my power so that this is it. We fix this problem now and then we don't ever have to deal with this problem again because I'm done. I'm so freaking tired. Like all the memes that 2020 is just like the worst year ever. And like, don't get me wrong. Every single day I feel like I see something new that is happening in 2020, our beautiful, beautiful year of 2020. And I'm like, are you serious? But let it be the year that everything hit the fan and we made a difference. We changed, we learned from it, and we moved on to be a better world, a better country, a better human, a better world. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Okay, so final chapter. <laughs> Book three, fire. Final chapter though is what I plan to do moving forward. And I don't have a super big plan here, but it's important to know that this is not a moment. This is a movement. This is a moment in history, this year, and everything that's happened in this year. But this right here, what we're talking about today, this will be written in history books. Our children will learn about this. Gen Z is stepping up to the plate. Like I'm really freaking proud of you guys. Like. Gosh, I am proud of you guys. And I don't know if you needed to hear that or even care, you know, from this millennial, almost Gen z -er, but I'm so freaking proud of you guys. You guys are doing amazing things. And our, ki our kids will learn about this in school or, you know, if we homeschool them at that point. And they will ask us, what, what happened? What did we do? I wanna be able to tell my children that I stood up for what was right, that I tried my hardest. I, I will fight to my last dying breath to make this world a better place. One thing that I had a really hard time with throughout all of this and even being silent, like I wanted to be silent, silent. And then coming back, I'm like, what should I say and what should I not say? And you know, honestly, I'm here to be criticized. I, I wanna be told, you know, hey, what you said wasn't right. I'm not here to talk for black people. I'm here to stand beside them, to elevate their voices as much as possible and to call out people when they're doing something wrong or they're doing something so incredibly hateful and stupid. I think it's easy in our day and age and our 
society to make it all about ourselves and sometimes to a fault I want to make it not about me but then I need to allow my voice to be heard so that people who apparently are only going to listen to someone who looks like me also hears what they need to hear and that's a weird conversation to have and I don't know if I'm even eloquently saying this enough and that's completely fine. I'm learning, you know? We're all learning and a lot of change needs to happen. A lot of change needs to happen, but personally, as long as you're out there trying to educate yourself as much as possible, trying to write these ideas, like write, not, not write, but correct, correct these ideas that you've been taught all your life and learn that they're not right. They're not, they're not correct, they're not okay. And reteaching ourselves, relearning things is really hard. Trust me, I know. When it comes to doing like shadow work and stuff like that, when it comes to writing your traumas, I know it's not easy. But it is important work that you need to do so that you can show up for not only yourself, but the world. Moving forward, I obviously am going to start posting content again. I'm sorry for anybody who was really looking for my content as like a form of escape in the last week. I'm really sorry about that. I will be posting content again, but I'm not done sharing resources and posts and I am not done signing petitions. I'm not done donating. I'm not done protesting. I'm not done voting and educating myself on who should be serving me, who should be representing me in my county, my state, my city, my country. If I can, the biggest thing is I'm going to get out there and I'm going to try and convince as many people as humanly possible to educate themselves and register to vote. I'm gonna continue to share as many black content creators, black artists, black restaurants, black businesses, black shops that I possibly can. And remember that I wanna live in a world that is not a bunch of just me. And I, I know that might sound funny, that might come off sounding weird or whatever, but I want to live in a world where I can walk down the street, I can live in a building or a neighborhood that has someone of every walk of life, where I can come together and talk with and have coffee with and collaborate with every person in this world. And I know that's gonna take a long time. I know that, you know, even just being an American, some countries, you know, hate America and fair. I'm not saying that I hate America, but it's fair. I understand. I understand the problems that we have. I'm sorry I'm like totally dazing off here. So yeah, I'm not done fighting the fight just because a week of social media silence is over or whatever. And I hope you guys will do the same. Okay, my little stories, I've been filming for uh, over an hour at this point, so we'll see how long this video ends up after editing it and splicing it all together. But thank you for watching this video, especially if you watch till the end here. I really appreciate you. If there was anything that I said during this video that you would like me to elaborate on, or if you feel like I said something out of turn or by mistake, please feel free to leave it in the comment box down below, remembering that I am willing to have a discussion with you as long as we both can be respectful and come at it from a place of wanting to understand each other and not from a place of hatred. I will be leaving a bunch of links down below of places where you can find more resources to learn and educate yourself, places that you can donate, petitions that you can sign, and I will be leaving a link to register to vote if you are in the United States. So definitely go check those out. Please Please choose kindness and love over hate whenever you possibly can. And I love you guys so incredibly much. I hope you have a great day, a great week, and I will see you on Wednesday with a two-week-ish vlog compilation something. I don't even really understand what it's gonna be yet. But And then I will be back at you on Saturday where we're gonna talk about some empathy. So if you're interested in talking about empathy, come back on Saturday. Bye!